quickly bless God for each and every one of you uh, joining us here uh, for Emmanuel Temple Church of God's Growing Towards Spiritual Maturity Bible Study. And I tell you, I really miss getting together with the people of God in person on these Wednesday night Bible classes. But I want you to know that God is blessing anyhow. Amen. A long distance blessing. So we certainly thank God for each and every one of you that joins us here on these Bible classes on Wednesday uh, evenings at 7 p.m. I want to thank the Lord also for Elder Victor Whittier who taught the Bible class on last week and we certainly enjoyed that Bible study lesson that he taught on last week. So you want to uh, make sure you check out Facebook or YouTube uh, to uh, you know just go over that lesson that he taught on last week. Uh, we thank the Lord for the prayer warriors that has been praying consistently every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. and from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and then again on Thursdays at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday mornings at from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. We thank the Lord for the prayer warriors and uh, we thank the Lord for each and every one of you as you uh, congregate and get to, uh, together to enjoy this Bible study lesson. I also want to just remind you guys of the um, the upcoming uh Fall Fellowship that uh, starts on Friday night at 7 p.m. We have uh, Bishop uh, uh, Jason uh, Nelson that will be um, speaking on uh, Friday for the Higher Ground International Ministries uh, Fall Fellowship. The Midwestern uh, Jurisdictional Region uh, will be um, engaged in a powerful, powerful virtual uh, conference. So you want to make sure you join that, uh, get your popcorn, your, your Bible, your your uh, water, and just sit and enjoy the Word of God right there from your home. And then on Saturday mornings, we have uh, powerful teachings going on, something for the pastors, something for the young people, uh, something for the, for the first ladies, uh, something for the ministers, uh, something for the whole entire body. And we have some wonderful teachers. So you want to make sure you join in on Friday night and we'll give you the lineup of all the wonderful things. And just make sure you sign up and register so you can be a part of, of the Higher Ground International Ministries uh, Fall Fellowship uh, held right here in the St. Louis area. This is mid-region uh, jurisdiction. Uh, we, we certainly bless God for the opportunity to serve God in the Higher Ground International Ministries. We also praise and thank God that after the Higher Ground uh, Conference is over, which, which should be ending about on, on Saturday morning about 12.30 uh, or so, the Emmanuel Temple Church of God uh, prayer team is uh, going to be out uh, doing a pop-up prayer. And you want to make sure that you join in on that information because I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing to everyone. You want to make sure you be a part of that. And that's going to be uh, held. Uh, that's at 1230 from 1230 to 115. So it's very short, but it's very powerful. And that's going to be at Rumble Park and the Jeff Vandaloo neighborhood on East Prairie and St. Ferdinand. Uh, again, that's uh, Jeff Vandaloo neighborhood on East Prairie and East or should I say uh, St. Ferdinand. Uh, and we're asking that you would wear your mask uh, to the uh, pop-up prayers because we want to make sure that we do things decently and in order. So we uh, also thank the Lord for the pop-up uh, prayer team committee that works so hard to get God's word out there. And I know the Lord smiles on that because it's a blessing to uh, make sure that we are doing what thus said the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord again for this Bible class tonight. And those of you just joining in, this is Bishop Ronnie Whittier with the Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box uh, 5057. If you want to just mail us in something and just let us know that you join us in on our, um, our, our Bible studies. You could also uh, visit uh, on those days where uh, things will go kind of back to normal because we're not telling everybody to come out at one time, but we uh, want to make sure that we have a, a number that's within compliance of the CDC guidelines. And uh, sometimes if you uh, just want to make sure that you're coming out, just uh, give us a call and, and let us know that you're interested in coming out or drop us a line by way of Facebook or um, also on our website, uh, uh, dot org. Um, you can uh, just join in and be a part of what God is doing through uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we thank the Lord for the opportunity to come to you by way of social media. 
Now today uh, we're going uh, to be dealing with a, a subject matter that I think is very, very necessary in this day and time and especially during this time of the pandemic and, and this time uh, where, where people are a bit fearful about what's, hap what's going to happen next. Um, as you know, we uh, are in the midst of the presidential uh, uh, election and voting uh, for the next president or maybe the same president. We don't know yet, but the thing about it is uh, we're being prayerful even in the midst of that. And we know that the enemy is trying to send out threats and and, and uh, a spirit of fear on people about what might happen uh, in regards to who wins. But remember, men and women of God, God always wins. You know, and there is no power or authority that exists uh, without God being uh, in control and sovereign over all of that. So we want to give you some peace in that because we don't want you to be fearful and thinking that um, that the devil has free reign of everything and that uh, he can do whatever he wants. But no, God has given the devil boundaries and we know he's the prince of the air. But uh, God also said in his word, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You know, so God is in control. And I want, I want you to remind yourself of that, that God is in control. God is in control. When you hear sad news, bad news, fearful news, I want you to say to yourself, God is in control. So we're going to be talking about uh, something that deals great, uh, right on target with uh, where we are in society right now. And we're going to be talking about fortitude, fortitude. Fortitude is defined as strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or to bear pain or adversity with courage. Now, I want to say a prayer before we dive deeper into this, because I want this to sink into your spirit. And I want to pray that God will bless this word to sink into your spirit and that it will take root and that you will grow strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would bless us. We go forward, O oh God, in this word tonight, O oh God, that you would speak to our hearts, O oh God, that you would feed us, O oh God, till we want no more. We pray, O oh God, for the spirit of fortitude to rest upon us, that as we seek to do your will, as we seek to walk in the steps that you've ordered for our lives, dear God, that we will find ourselves in the center of your will, O oh God, and that we are exercising the fortitude, O oh God, as a result of obedient walking in your will. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we just praying that somebody gets saved as a result of listening to this lesson on tonight. Now fortitude again is defined as strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. And you know that takes that takes uh, the power of God when you're facing something uh, that you don't, are not sure about. And, you know, we know we got people that in the secular side of life that uh, exercise fortitude in that regard, uh, in regard to uh, uh, the uh, flesh, in regards to secular things. But I want to talk about and focus this Bible lesson on the spiritual fortitude that we got to have. That spiritual fortitude will strengthen you so wherein the natural man has nothing to do but get in compliance with what your spirit is doing. Because, you know, the word of God says, how can man hold fire in his bosom and he not be burned? So it's impossible for you to have fortitude deep down in your heart, fortitude deep down in your spirit, and it not affect the decisions and choices that you make in life. Now, to be uh, homiletically uh, in line with things, we want to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, and we're going to look at verse uh, number 7, and then we're going to look at verse number 23. And then, uh, just for uh, the record, we want you to just kind of uh, write down, we're going to go to Joshua chapter 1 also. All right, Joshua chapter 1. Okay, now in Deuteronomy chapter 31, and verse number 7, Deuteronomy 31, 7 says, And Moses called unto jo Joshua and said unto him, in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Okay, so God is uh, again uh, reinforcing through Moses to Joshua this message that we're going to see later. And I want to read the same verse again, and then I'm going to read verse 23. Joshua 31 verse 7 says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, so everybody is observing this, you all, and listening to this. 
He says, be strong and of good courage, of a good courage, for thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord had sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. So God wants to give Israel what he promised them, but you know, there are uh, conditions in which God is going to release these blessings. We cannot be out of the will of God and expect to inherit or receive the blessings of the Lord. You know, we can't live satanic type lives and expect God to shower down spiritual godly blessings upon us. You know, the spirit of God and the spirit of the enemy cannot dwell in the same temple. All right. Now look at verse number 23 of this same chapter. Verse 23 of uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31. It says, and he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, be strong and of a good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land uh, which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. So God is saying, I'm going to be with you, Joshua. I'm going to be with you in the midst of this. All I'm asking you to do is do your part. See, because the thing about it is we can do our part. God is certainly going to do his part. And God is not going to ask us to do something that is beyond our ability. Now, it may be beyond our ability, but he will anoint us to do it. He's not going to ask you to do something that he knows that cannot in any way be done except he encourage you so or strengthen you to do so. So he's telling Joshua, okay, you, you be strong and you be courageous from your perspective and I'll be with you. I'll be there with you. You know, I like to uh, say that, you know, when, when, when we make mistakes or should I say the uh, uh, excuses, should I say, of not wanting to do God's will because we feel that we're uh, incompetent and Lord choose somebody else. You know, if God has selected you to be the one to do that particular work, then God is going to give you what you need to complete that work. You know, you may say, hey, I'm sick in my body. I, I, I don't feel uh, like I used to feel many years ago. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm uh, on my last roundup, as they say. Uh, but I want you to know that God will strengthen you. If you know without a shadow of a doubt that God has given you an assignment, and God wants you to complete the assignment and he has shown you whether it be through dreams or visions or trances or uh, some other type of revelation that God may have revealed to you that he's going to do a particular work through your life. Then you have to trust God in spite of your feelings. You have to trust God in spite of the doctor's prognosis of your health. You got to trust God to the very end. You got to believe and take God at his word. As God said to uh, Joshua here, uh, 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 said to uh, uh, Joshua, he said, I, I, I swear this and I made this commitment to Moses. And I'm telling you, uh, as Moses has told you, to be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Do not allow what you see around you to cause you to fall apart. And we know there's a lot of things around us that will cause us to weaken or, or cause us to feel that uh, we're incompetent because we see intellectual people, people that are smooth talkers or we want to call them smooth operators, uh, seem like they got have more resources than what you have. And it, it, it challenges your uh, sense of stability. It challenges uh, who you are because you are just looking at, hey, I have nothing uh, but to trust in the Lord. And let me tell you, that's that's more than what they got. Because God on your side is more than the world against you. And so you have to not belittle the fact that God is with you. You have to not belittle that. You know, the enemy may have a big army there standing against you, but you have to trust God that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above whatever you may ask or think. You know, sometimes we say we're trusting God, but we uh, have a tendency to focus on what we can totally see with our, our, our natural eye. And we rely on that. You know, if, if, if your resources have shortened, that stack is shortened, then you're looking at how short that is. And you're not looking at the fact that God is with you and God is able to take a little bit and to do a whole lot with it. So we have to learn how to trust God in spite of the opposition that uh, we are facing. We have to trust God and we have to stand firm on his word uh, because God said it and he's going to do it. Whether we believe it or not, God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And we have to trust God to the very end. We cannot allow ourselves to become uh, sidetracked by our fleshly uh, uh, limitations that we have.
Now in Joshua chapter one and verse six, verse number six, verse number seven, and verse number nine, God reassures Joshua that to be strong and courageous. He says, be strong and courageous. Be strong, very courageous. Be of good courage. God is reinforcing that in the spirit of Joshua because he wants him to know that you're going to face opposition. See, that's uh, the thing that sometimes we think is not going to happen because I'm saved. Nobody is going to oppose me or I'm not going to have uh, the kind of problems that I see other people having. And I'm super saved because of the uh, 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 dedication I have with my walk with the Lord. But I want to let you know that no matter what your uh, status or you, how you view your status, whether you view yourself as saved or super saved. And I'm being a little sarcastic when I say super saved because uh, some people believe that they got a whole lot more than what others have and that no one else would ever attain to that level of spirituality. But I want to let you know that God is no respect of persons. If you spend time in the presence of God, doing the will of God, uh, seeking the face of God, then God is going to uh, deal with you. God is going to be with you. God is going to strengthen you. God will speak uh, through you. He will show you uh, various things uh, at his will. He will show you what he wants you to know. So you don't have to be in competition with anyone else. You don't have to pat yourself on the back uh, saying how uh, uh, strong you are, how much you've acquired and how much you've attained uh, because all the glory belongs to the Lord. And, you know, God is a jealous God. And so we have to remember that. We have to remember that we can't steal God's glory from him. We can't try to steal it. You're not going to be able to steal it. Uh, some folks try. Amen. But let me tell you something. The glory of God is so powerful that you will not be able to contain it within your human uh, uh, frailties and your human uh, uh, finite abilities. You know, you're not infinite. God is infinite, but you are limited. So in your limited ability, you will not be able to uh, 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 contain the glory of God as though it's your own, you know, because God's glory, he says he will not share with another. So we have to understand that the things that we do, even though they may be great and mighty things, understand it as a, as a born again, Christian, as a Holy ghost filled individual, understand that it is God that is doing these things through you. And the devil is going to constantly be tugging at you to try to get you to take your eyes off God, try to make you a uh, 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 blunder in the sense that you are not focusing on what thus said the Lord. And you got to love God more than you love this flesh. You, you got to love God more than you love money. You got to love God more than you love anything and anybody else. Now, that may be a hard uh, truth for a lot of people to swallow, but it's a reality. It's the it's the word of God. We have to stand on. And a lot of people have turned the right way and run away. I know for me when I when I make that statement because people like so you you telling me that I got to love God more than I love uh, uh, my children. I got to love God more than I love my husband or more than I love my wife. I got to love God more than I love money. I got to love God more than I love uh, my, my materialism. You know, and my answer to you is yes, you have to love God more than you love all those things. For Jesus himself said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? And the answer is nothing. You know, nothing. You know, we are all living in a no parking zone and we have to move at some point. So all those things that you may have acquired during your lifetime, you're not going to be able to take those things with you. So you might as well connect with God and stay focused with God. You know, I wrote a little thought down, uh, something a uh, Lord had given me some time ago. Uh, and it says that everything in Satan's store is overpriced. Everything in Satan's store is overpriced. He doesn't display his prices up front. Because he knows you might think twice before buying. See, if the devil told you that he'll give you all of these things, whatever he's showing you, but you're going to end up in hell and he wants you to join him when he's thrown in that pit, then you would probably think twice about accepting whatever the devil is offering you. So that's why Jesus said, don't fear him that can only destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy both the body and soul. And that's God himself. The devil can't even destroy your soul. He can destroy your body. He can do harm to your physical body, but he cannot touch your soul if you are a born again Christian. Even if you're not a born again Christian, the devil cannot uh, touch your soul in the sense uh, that uh, he make you die and not live on and on whether you spend it in hell or not. 
Only God has that capability. I want you to know that a lot of times we put God and the devil on the same uh, level spiritually and we say we got two uh, forces. You got a good on one side and you got a bad on the other side and, 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 and the bad is whispering and telling you to do bad things and the good is whispering and telling you to do good things. Uh, today the good might win and uh, tomorrow uh, the bad might win. But see, you've given the devil too much uh, authority and too much uh, 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 leverage in your life if you are viewing him like that. Because the thing about it, born again Christian, I'm talking to the born again Holy Ghost filled Christian. The thing about it is if you are a born again Holy Ghost filled Christian, the power of God in your life will reveal to you that the devil is nothing but a small, 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 infinitely small imp in the presence of God. In the presence of God. The reason he seems so big to us is because we're natural beings and the devil is a supernatural being. He's a fallen angel and he can do supernatural things. We cannot do supernatural things except the Lord anoint us to do supernatural things. And God will do things through his people. But we have to humble ourselves in the presence of God and make sure that we are being strong and very courageous. Now, again, for those of you just joining us, this lesson is titled Fortitude. This lesson is titled Fortitude, and we just want to let you know we're coming from uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, and we're looking at verse 7 and verse 23. And also, we just did a uh, comparison contrast, if you want to say, uh, to Joshua chapter 1, verses number 6, 7, and 9, Okay. Again, uh, Joshua 1, verses 6, 7, and 9. And we're just looking at how three times in the book of Joshua, God uh, told Joshua to be strong and courageous. See, so there are certain components uh, to this lesson that I want to give out to you. Just about four components I want to give to you in regards to fortitude. And you might want to jot these down. The first component of fortitude is faith in God. That's a necessary component to attaining fortitude. You have to have faith in God. You have to have faith in God. Now, I'm not talking about a, a, a faith that wavers back and forth and up and down and, you know, you're good with that. You don't want uh, wavering up and down faith. One day you got faith, the next day you don't. Uh, you have to attain and strengthen your faith by doing spiritual faith exercises. There's things that uh, may challenge where you are on a certain level of spirituality, once you get past that particular thing, then God has blessed you to gain more strength in your faith. Uh, after a while, you come to understand where the passage of scripture says that we walk by faith and not by sight. You learn to trust God in spite of what you see. You learn to trust God and stand on his word. So that's a very, very necessary component uh, to fortitude. And I just want to recapitulate and give you a uh, again a, a definition that I have of fortitude. Fortitude again is the strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage. It gives you the ability to encounter danger or pain or bear pain or adversity with courage. You know, so you may say, hey, yeah, I'm in pain. Uh, things are looking kind of dim where I'm headed. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my fortitude tells me to hold fast. Fortitude, you all, is a combination of courage and strength to move into the unknown. Come on now, write that down. Fortitude is a combination of courage and strength to move into the unknown. Courage and strength to move into the unknown. You know, if you already know where you're going, if you already know what's going to happen, this, that, and the other, you know, you don't really think twice about going into it because you've been there, done that, and and and, and uh, so you're not really challenged spiritually or so because you've done it before, uh, so you know and believe that you can uh, accomplish that task again. But the fortitude that I'm talking about today is going into the unknown, a combination of courage and strength. To move, that's an action word, move into the unknown, you know. So God will show us so much, but one thing he reassured us, you all, he said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. You know, those words are powerful coming from the mouth 
of the only true living God. Those words are powerful coming from the creator of this world. And if God told you I'll be with you, then why are you not doing what God called you to do? You know, so you got to ask yourself, you know, am I exercising fortitude? Am I doing what thus said the Lord? Am I am I allowing God to use me? You know, I I, I don't want to have and I can speak of myself. You are. I don't want to have the kind of uh, faith that will go if I can see where I'm going and will go if somebody else will go with me. Uh, but notice God uh, is a reassuring Joshua, reassuring Joshua. Because he was the one in charge. Now, in your ministry, whatever your ministry is, and that doesn't mean that you have to be a preacher that preaches from the pulpit. Uh, but in your ministry, whatever God has called you to do, uh, do it with the spirit of fortitude. Because God is talking to you because he gave you that particular assignment. And that assignment is not going to tell you to go against the will of God. That assignment is going to uh, reinforce your uh, the reality that you need God to help get you through that situation to, to help you accomplish whatever that assignment is. So the very first component component to fortitude is you got to have faith in God. The second component of fortitude is not just faith in God's presence, but also faith in God's purpose. Not just faith in God's presence, but also faith in God's purpose. You know, a lot of people believe, okay, God is with me. You know, and I can accomplish the goals that he has set before me. I can accomplish this task that is set before me. And then the enemy will try to mess with your mind and say, but I don't understand why. You know, sometimes you just got to stop thinking logically, you all. And ask God to just bless you to do what he told you to do. Regardless. You know, because again, if you just trusted in his presence, and not in God's purpose. If you don't have faith in God's purpose, then that's going to challenge your level of fortitude. It's going to challenge your level of determination to do what God has called you to do. Okay? So the first component again is of, of, of fortitude. The first component of, component of fortitude is first faith in God. The second component of fortitude is not just faith in God's presence, but faith in God's purpose. So we have to be driven by the purpose that God has for our lives. Now, Jesus gave us a purpose in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, the Great Commission. Now, every single born again Christian on the face of this planet has been given this purpose. So nobody can say God didn't give me anything to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I feel like God has overlooked me. I feel like I'm just out there by myself. Well, you know, that's a something, a pity uh, story that the devil has sold you because he doesn't want you to realize that God has enabled you. If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and you truly love God and you truly want to do the will of God, God has enabled you to be a soul winner. That's why the Papa prayer at Emmanuel Temple and, and the prayer warriors and, and those that are just on board with what God is doing uh, in the ministry, God is blessing you because you got a purpose. You know, just think about it. If you go through life without a purpose, you know, you just get up in the morning. Let me see what the day is going to bring. You get up in the morning, whatever happened, que sera, sera, whatever it would be, will be. Uh, you know, you're just going to live your life like that and never really accomplishing any goals, never really doing anything great for the kingdom of God. You know, I, I wake up every morning and I kid you not, I'm not just saying this because I'm uh, teaching this lesson today, but I, I want to do something great for God every day. And I want to I want to please God. I don't want to please my flesh. My, my flesh always wants to do just the opposite of right. And so does your flesh, you know, because our flesh has a certain characteristic about itself that I may not even know who you are, may never see, have never seen you a day in my life. And you may have never seen me a day in your life. You just happen to wander onto this uh, uh, Facebook page or for those that will be watching YouTube and see my face. But the thing about it is our flesh has a lot in common. It wants to do what it wants to do. 
You know, it wants to do what it wants to do. You probably woke up this morning, the alarm clock went off. If you are an individual that wakes up by alarm clock, the alarm clock went off and your flesh said, oh, it's, uh, it's time for me to get up, but I don't want to get up. So I'm going to hit the snooze button and sleep another seven minutes or whatever the time frame, uh, uh, in between time you got between snoozes. And you just keep hitting the snooze until you say, well, let me get on up. You know, your flesh wanted to stay uh, in bed, but your 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 uh, common sense and logic told you if you are an individual that have to go and punch that time clock that you need to get to work if you're gonna put some food on that table. You need to get to work if you're gonna have a a, 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 a house over your head, you know, and and accomplish certain things that you need to come. So you need to uh, earn an increase. So you move beyond what your flesh is saying. So, you know, it's just like that in the spiritual realm. Uh, when God tells you to do something, your flesh is going to be telling you one thing, but the voice of God is going to humbly tell you and sternly tell you to walk in obedience to the word of God. Walk in obedience and trusting and exercising that fortitude and, and that type of faith that trust not just in the presence of God, but in the purpose of God. And whatever God's purpose is for your life, whatever God has purpose for you to do, then trust God. Exercise that faith. Exercise that faith and not just in God, but in his presence and his purpose. And then the third component of fortitude is to be obedient. Obedient to the commands of God. Be obedient to the commands of God. Your flesh again wants to do what it wants to do your flesh looks for a shortcut you know even if you may say okay pastor Whittier I'm not listening to my flesh and my spirit is telling me this or my spirit is telling me that and, and and whatever and I I know this is God's will but look if it clashes with what God has told you God is not sending conflicting messages so you got to understand that it's another voice talking to you and sometimes we point the finger at the devil and say it's the voice of the devil talking to us, but it's also your voice talking to you. And your boss voice is telling you that everything is fine and you're going to do things the way you want to do it. It's a self-righteous spirit. You may not want to hear me say that, but it's a self-righteous spirit. And that self-righteous spirit tells you that you can do it your way and God got accepted whether he like it or not. Well, you know what? what what's happening is you're living in the grace of God. And in the long suffering of God, there's a long suffering period that God allows us to go through. And, and then when that period of, of time is up, then God pulls back the skirt that he's been hiding our shame with and allows us to be exposed and that we're not doing the will of God. Now, look, this is not a message of rebuke, but this is a message of encouragement to you for you to get in the will of God. If you are a born again believer, for you to get into the will of God and to do what thus saith the Lord. This is an encouragement to you that if you know that God has spoken and given you an assignment to do, and that assignment, I want to reiterate, is not going to conflict the written word of God. That assignment is not going to be a gossiping about somebody else's business assignment. That assignment is, is not going to be one that brings a harm to somebody innocent. That assignment is not going to be a confusing, troublemaking spirit. You know, sometimes we, we, we think because uh, our flesh is comfortable with certain decisions and choices we make in life that God has to accept that. But remember, the Bible lets us know that there will be, uh, in, in the end time, there will be those that will come before the Lord and say, uh, it, it was me that uh, preached in your name. It was me that did this or that and the other in your name. And the word of God says that God will say, depart from me, I never knew you. I never knew you. You're going around saying you know the Lord, but the question is, does the Lord know you? Some of us have been saved so long in our minds that we forgot that we got to please God outside of our minds. We got to please God in our everyday actions. We have to please God in how we treat our neighbor. We have to please God in being in the will of God and humbly uh, submitting to the will of God and what God has called uh, uh, us to do. See, we have to submit ourselves to God and then, James 1 and 7, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. If you're not submitting yourself to God, you can be resisting all you want or trying to, but at some point, you're going to 
a yield because you're not in the will of God. You're not doing things according to the written word of God. And you're going to end up out of the will of God, totally out of the will of God. And you know, the thing about being out of the will of God, uh, the devil will make you being comfortable, feel comfortable and being out of the will of God. And you think, hey, yeah, I got going on and nothing bad happening in my life. As a matter of fact, I'm enjoying my life and I'll, I'll get around to God when the time comes. He know I love him. He know he got my heart. But let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God, he doesn't need me and he doesn't need you. But we certainly need him. I'm going to say that again. God does not need you and he doesn't need me, but we certainly need him. And you might be out there saying you don't need him, but if you like living, even in your foolishness, you got to breathe. You can be a breathing fool and saying that there is no God. All that means is you a fool that don't understand that it's a living God that's allowing you to breathe and God and allowing you to breathe Count those days as an opportunity for you to repent and humble yourself in the, in, the, in the presence of God and get things right by repenting and turning to God and asking God to save you and to fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Because God is the only one that gives life and he's the only one that should be able to take it. And so that's why it's a crime and wrong. And the Ten Commandments tell us that thou should not kill, you know, so you didn't give life. So you don't have the right to take it. OK, so for those of you just joining in, we got a few minutes left here. We're talking about 42 tonight and uh, we came from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, uh, verse number seven. And uh, also in the Deuteronomy 31, verse number 23. And also we uh, just did a comparison contrast with Joshua, chapter one, verses six, seven and nine. Joshua chapter 1 verses 6, 7 and 9. And we just want to encourage you to exercise some fortitude in your life. Some fortitude in your life and you you exercise that fortitude under the unction of the power of God by surrendering to the will of God. And I, I'm giving out four components uh, of fortitude. And the first one is faith in God. That's the first component of fortitude is faith in God. The second component of fortitude is not just faith in God's presence, but faith in God's purpose. Faith in God's purpose. Now, the third component of fortitude is confidence in the sovereign providence of God. Confidence in the sovereign providence of God. And that means that you trust and believe in God as a sovereign God over everything. Now, when I use that word sovereign, I'm talking about his supreme rulership, his supreme authority, the sovereign God. That means everything that is, is the providence of God, you know. The United States and all the other countries and all of those things that people are saying that they own and it was theirs. Uh, you know, the one man that uh, uh, went to jail uh, and uh, he uh, allegedly hung himself, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, it said that he owned an island. Well, Jeffrey Epstein is gone, but the island is still here. You know why? Because the island belongs to God. That's why. Rockefeller. Lots of money. Rockefeller is gone. But the money and the warehouse used or whatever he may have built or, or did with that money is still here. Okay. You know why? Because it belongs to God. You know. And anything that you may own or I may own, we may be enjoying the luxuries of those things while we are living. But those things cannot go with us when we leave this life. So the best thing that we can do is humble ourselves uh, to the uh, spirit of God and the presence of God and do what thus saith the Lord. You know, we're talking about fortitude. So that, for, that, that third component is confidence in the sovereign providence of God. Know, know that God owns everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. So everything belongs to God. L look, the land that you in the house that you living on, you said, this is my house. I bought this house. Yeah, you may have bought it, uh, but really it's just being leased to you from God. You, you're, on a, you're on a lease. All of us are. We, we got a lease in life for whatever the length of time we're going to be living in this life. We, we, we're on a lease. You know, we, we, we don't we don't own it. God owns it all. OK, so the third again, the third uh, 
uh, component of fortitude is confidence in the sovereign providence of God. And then the fourth and the last one I want to give you tonight, uh, uh, the fourth component of fortitude is to be obedient to the commands of God. Be obedient to the commands of God. You might say Pastor Whittier is a broken record, always saying obedience is the currency for heaven. And you well, you're going to hear it again. Obedience is a currency for heaven. If you want to see a move of God in your life, be obedient to God. Look, there is no substitute for obedience. There is no substitute for obedience. You can say, well, God, I'm going to do part of your will. And that got to count for something. Look, you have to walk in total obedience and submission to the will of God. You have to be totally sold out to the will of God. You have to remind yourself that you are not your own. If you are a Holy Ghost filled, born again believer, you're not your own, but you bought, you are bought with a price and that price is the blood of Jesus. You have to remind yourself that God has given you an assignment and just like our natural teacher uh, uh, grades our, our, our papers to see whether we passed or not, God grades our papers and our papers is our life that we live every day. Our papers, our assignments is how we do what God called us to do. In what spirit are you doing what God called you to do? If you're doing things with a, a I don't care spirit, then don't expect the Lord to move in your life and to give you those things that you see God is doing in others' lives in the sense of ministry that is. Because you can uh, you cannot have one drop of Holy Ghost in you and, and acquire natural things. OK, so a lot of times people think that the uh, sign of being blessed is how much materialism you got. And that's so far from the truth, because remember, Jesus said birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, we're talking about God in the flesh. Jesus, God in the flesh. OK, uh, uh, he, he stayed at various folks homes. OK. Uh, and and, and uh, the thing about it is if you gauge in uh, how spiritual someone is based on how much materialism they got, then, you know, you need to rethink that because that's not how God see it. OK, there are, are totally wicked people that has much, much riches, you know, and, and uh, they, they don't believe in God or anything. And they have many, many. Uh, riches. They can do whatever they want to do with their riches, you know, but, you know, again, they just like the, everybody else. They living in a no parking zone. And, and after a while, they got to leave from this life and, and they got to meet the maker and they got to have an uh, answer concerning everything done in their life. The word of God lets us know we got to give an account to God for everything done in our body, whether it's good or bad. If you got bad intent, and you uh, live day by day with wicked desires and wicked intent and wicked purpose and wicked concoctions in your mind and, and treating people bad and robbing people of what belongs to them and, and, and abusing and hating, uh, uh, hating on God and the people of God and, and all of those things that are an abomination in the sight of God, then understand you got to stand before God one day and give an account of all of that. Okay? Now, uh, I, I, I want to give these four components real quick again because uh, the time is drawing nigh for us to to, uh, to end the uh, class here soon. But I want you to I want you to get this. I want you to get it embedded in your spirit, as I said at the first start of this lesson tonight. I want this to be uh, embedded in your spirit because when something is in your spirit, it's hard for you to forget about it. You know, you wake up in the morning thinking about it. You turn over in the night thinking about it. It drives you to do what thus said the Lord. So we want this to be embedded in your spirit. We're talking about fortitude again. And fortitude, I gave out four components. And I'm going to give those again real quick. And then we're going to wrap this up. Okay. The first component of fortitude is faith in God. Faith in God. That's the first component of fortitude. The second component of fortitude is not just faith in God's presence, but faith in God's purpose. Again, the second component of fortitude is not just faith in God's presence, but faith in God's purpose. OK. All right. The third component of fortitude is is uh, to have confidence in the sovereign providence of God is having confidence in the sovereign providence of God. That's the third component of fortitude. OK. And then the fourth component of fortitude is to be obedient to the commands of God obedient to the commands of God. There will be times that God will tell you to do something that your flesh just don't want to do. He may tell you to go to the person that treats you the worst on your job. 
and tell you to 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 bless them uh, in whatever way uh, he's telling you to bless them, whether it be buy their lunch for them today, tell them that you're praying for them today, uh, buy them a, 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 a bottle of water or something. Say I thought about you, got you a bottle of water or 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 or, or just something. I'll help you in getting your workload completed. Whatever it is, God may tell you to do that. See, because you don't know who, who just you exercising a Christian attribute of, 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 of walking in obedience to the will of God. You don't know who God will save as a result of your obedience. Okay. You may not like the person because of the way they treat you or, or may have said something hurtful to you. But you know what, men and women of God, we got to grow some tough skin. We got to grow the type of skin that we can let things roll off of us. And I know things don't roll off of us as easy as we would like for them to. to and we're going through growing stages. But look, if you still are uh, worrying and crying about something that happened a long period of time ago, and, and you're using that as your reason for not doing the will of God and for not being kind to a particular person, then it ought to bother you because the Holy Ghost uh, will teach you to grow beyond those uh, humanistic things that seem to hinder us. Now, you may say, Pastor Whittier, that may be easy for you to say. And I want to let you know, that's not the easiest thing for me to say. I've had people wrong me too and, and, and people to uh, uh, lie on me just like people may have wronged you and lied on you. Uh, everybody go through growing pains and things that they hate they've had to experience. But we don't live our life looking in the rear view of uh, a mirror of life. We do not live our lives, live, living our lives, looking in the rear view mirror of life. Because you will never effectively move forward. You're going to keep running into things ahead of you because you keep looking back. We need to keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We need to be moving forward and not backwards. You know, we, we need to lock that in our spirits if we're going to see a move of God in our lives. If we're going to see so, folks get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost uh, through your ministry. If you're going to see folks on your job uh, saved and, 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 and inquiring and asking you about the things of God. If you're going to be an encourager during this time of, of pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this time of racial injustices and this time of insurity where people are troubled and fearful and boarding up windows and doors and, and fearful about the election and how violent things may turn you know we you know we 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 would just never go outside of our homes if we just let the devil just continue to do and blow breathing accusations and and fire on us we we have to understand uh that god wants us to exercise faith God wants us to exercise faith, not just in his presence, but in his purpose also. God wants us to have confidence in, in the, provin, uh, the sovereign providence of God. He wants us to be obedient uh, to his commands. These are the things that God is saying to us. You know, and you might say and you got your own agenda, but if your agenda conflicts the agenda of God, then guess whose agenda will fall to the ground? Yours. Yours. So you have to ask God to strengthen you with a spirit of obedience and humble submission and surrender to God so God can continue or begin, whatever the case may be, the work in you that God wants to do in you. You have to humble yourself in the sight and in the presence of God. Look, a thought that I have here is that in a risk-free society, you produce wimps. In other words, if... There is no sacrifice or potential dangers in what you're doing, then, and you say, hey, I want those kind of assignments, then you're not really going to grow strong in your faith. Because, you know, it, it, it doesn't enable you to know how to fight devils effectively. Now, this applies to both males and females now, because we talk about wimps, we automatically think this is just a, a manly thing and some, some macho thing. No, I'm talking spiritual tonight here, you are. I'm talking about the spirituality in a risk-free society, in a, in, a, in a setting where you don't have to take any risk, any risk whatsoever, because you playing it safe. It doesn't produce stronger Christians. Now, uh, and, and I'm saying that on the strength of whatever the task that God may have given you, and you know it's going to be a risk for you, understand that 
uh, that risk is keeping you that that lack of take trust in God because you want a risk free uh, atmosphere that that's not going to enable you to trust God and it's going to keep you from doing the will of God that the, the will that God has assigned for you to do in your life. You know, uh, whatever dreams you may have or visions you may have seen, understand God is not just showing dreams and visions just to serenade you during the night or the day, whenever they may come. Amen. God is speaking a word to you. If you really believe that God is talking to you and you really believe uh, that, that God has saved you and sanctified you and filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, then you have to understand uh, that you cannot effectively live a risk free in a risk free society and not expect uh, 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 challenges. You can't you can't um, have a I don't want any challenges mentality. Because that's going to cause you to only have a wimpish type of spirit. And you want to be a, a spiritual giant in the hands of God. You want to be a spiritual uh, megaphone mouthpiece in the, uh, in the voice of God. Okay. And then the other thing I just wrote down is you cannot make an omelet without first breaking some eggs. So you're going to have to, you're going to, have to make some sacrifices. You're going to have to trust God beyond your fear. You're going to have to trust God beyond your doubt. You're going to have to trust God beyond your unbelief. Now, I know during this time when folks are at home a lot, we're at home a lot now because of this COVID-19 and, and rightfully so. And you should be doing those things that protect you and your family and, and, and have you in a safe environment. That's good. I, I, I applaud you for that. But I also want to remind you. Amen. That such a time as this is when we really need to be sounding the gospel a clarion, where we really need to be blowing that trumpet and letting folks know that Jesus is going to return and he's looking for a church without spot, wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. And we cannot find ourselves out of the will of God. We cannot find ourselves not doing what thus said the Lord. God would have us doing his will all the time. And again, that's going to pull us out of our safety zone. That's going to pull us out of that zone where uh, we are not challenged. You know, I, I read one place where it said that safety zones is places is a place where dreams go to die. If God has shown you a dream in a dream or in a vision, you are doing the will of God. If God has shown you and God has spoken to you and God has anointed you to do his will and to spread his word, then even in the midst of this COVID-19, you can uh, become creative in how you get the word of God out to people. You can get the word out to uh, people through social media. Uh, you don't even have to come in contact with people. You can put the tracks in a, in a Ziploc bag or something. Uh, very inexpensive expensive fold over don't even have to be ziplock just fold over bag and just lay them out for people to get you know they have these uh i call them grabbers that you can grab uh and and reach out and be at least uh six feet from people and, and, and passing things to them you know so they're just just become creative and and what you believe god has called you to do you know you uh you can do it I know during this uh, past week, uh, Halloween, they were showing how people had become creative about how they were giving out treats on Halloween. And one man had a, a clothesline or something from his front door leading out to the edge of his sidewalk that he had little uh, uh, canisters or something that he would have, a, uh, you know, just send it down on a clothesline uh, to the kids out at the sidewalk. You know, now I use that example because he became creative. He wanted to celebrate Halloween. So he came up with a way to accomplish his goal. And that's the same way uh, we need to be about getting God's word out there. We have to become creative of how we go about doing what we know God called us to do. The reason I'm streaming today is because I wanted to make sure that I was doing my part as a preacher and as a pastor to get God's word out to his people for the flock that God has placed me over Emmanuel Temple Church of God. Uh, to make sure that I'm doing everything that God called me to do in regards to getting his word out to Emmanuel Temple and, and anybody else that would uh, tune in to hear God's word. I'm not trying to become a TV star or anything like that, but I'm just wanting to make sure that God's word is out there and I want to make sure that I'm doing my part. I don't want to uh, use excuses of why I'm not ministering God's word, why I'm not uh, doing what God called me to do. 
Okay. Uh, again, this lesson was a very powerful lesson. I pray that you got something out of this lesson. We were talking about fortitude. For those of you that may have just joined in, we were talking about fortitude and we came from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, uh, chapter 31, verse number seven and verse number 23. And also from Joshua chapter one, verse number six, seven and nine. Okay. And just go back and look at the uh, video uh Again, if you miss some of those components, I gave four components on, on, on fortitude. And if you miss some of those, I just want you to go back and go over it and just break it down and move about at the pace in which is comfortable for you. I always like to say, uh, put them in bite sized pieces for you. Okay. Now, I want to offer to anyone that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the parting of your sins, if you've never surrendered to the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, to, to surrender your life to the Lord, I want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life and ask, ask you to bless me, Lord, to be baptized in the name of Jesus and to be filled with the precious gifts of the Holy Ghost with speaking in tongues as your spirit gives utterance. In Jesus' precious name, I pray to God. Amen. And for that individual that backslid or turned away from God is that out there doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, sleeping in the wrong bed, taking somebody else's belongings doing things that you shouldn't be doing. I want you to know that God's got watching you. God got, as John P. Key said in one of the songs, uh, you, you better repent, amen. Uh, and some people think they can trick him, but unless you repent, he still got you on film, amen. So God can see in the dark, amen. He can see a black ant on a black rock at midnight. So don't think you can hide from God and God know not know what's in your heart, amen. He is a discerner of the thoughts. The word of God tells us that Hebrews 4 and 12, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the sun, the soul and spirit, and joints of marrow, is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God finds us where we are. So we want to make sure that we're in the will of God. We want to make sure that we're doing what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Again, I want to invite you to the Higher Ground Ministries, uh, International Ministries uh, uh, Virtual Fall Conference. This is our conference that we have every year uh, at the end of the year. And this uh, conference starts on this Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, it's a virtual conference. And all you have to do is just join in. If you've not registered, register and join in the Higher Ground International Ministries uh, Virtual Conference. Uh, we got uh, Jason Nelson that will be uh, ministering on Friday night at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday morning, starting at 8.15, there's going to be uh, prayer. Uh, the God-seeking soldiers are going to be praying. Um, uh, you, we have pastors, uh, a pastor seminar that's going to begin uh, at that time. And uh, we got two wonderful pastors that's going to be teaching that. Our assistant presider, Bishop uh, uh, Terrence Coleman and, and Pastor uh, Byron Thompson is going to be teaching that. And then we have Pastor James Hampton is going to be teaching the class. We have uh, uh, Minister Darren Watson is going to be teaching. Uh, we have uh, the First Ladies uh, going to uh, have a class, I believe. Uh, our First Lady Crawford is going to be teaching in that class. Uh, we're going to be hearing from our, uh, our presider, Apostle Baylor, is going to be uh, 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 um, summarizing and rounding things up for us at the end. And uh, I'll be speaking to you, amen, uh, for a period of time, amen, uh, just letting you know that we out there and that uh, we want to make sure that God's word is getting out there to everybody. And I'm, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but there's something for everybody to be uh, sung in ministry uh, uh, that I'm sure we'll uh, be uh, blessed with. And I just want to, uh, again, invite you to be a part of that. I also want to encourage you to uh, be a blessing to Emmanuel Temple uh, through your giving, amen, uh, we're asking you... If you would uh, like to give tithes and offering to Emmanuel Temple, you can go uh, to Givelify. That's an app that you can download on your phone and you can give by way of Givelify. Uh, you will see uh, Emmanuel Temple Church of God, 4932 uh, 35 Union Boulevard, and you can uh, give through Givelify that way. Uh, you will see a picture of myself and a picture of the church building. And that's actually uh, Emmanuel Temple Church God, 4935 Union Boulevard. Uh, also, you can give uh, through Cash App. That's the dollar sign. Small case letters, Emmanuel Temple STL. Uh, again, that's the dollar sign, Emmanuel Temple STL Cash App. Or you can also go to our website, EmmanuelTempleChurchOfGod.org. You can give through PayPal. 
Or if you would like to mail in tithes, offerings, donations, whatever God has blessed you with to be a blessing to the ministry because the ministry is functioning as a result of tithers and those that support the work of God's ministry. And I pray that God bless your home as a result and your efforts as a result. But you can also mail in to Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Again, that's Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. We pray that God would touch your heart, that you will be a blessing to this ministry. Look, I'm just going to take a leap of faith and say this to somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you got a settlement of some kind and God bless you uh, uh, with a nice uh, uh, settlement, I'm asking you uh, to consider tithing on that settlement to Emmanuel Temple Church of God. Now, I'm not begging anybody, but it's just in my heart. There's something the Lord put in my spirit to say on this particular uh, uh, broadcast. Uh, if you have gotten a settlement of a significant amount or whatever amount, some settlement, tithe on it and watch God bless you. Watch God bless you. Send that tithe to Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115, or cash app us at the dollar sign Emmanuel Temple STL. I trust God that God put that in my spirit. And this, this is out of character for me, you all. For anybody that know me, no, I don't do this. OK, but I know God put this in my spirit and God want to bless you. And so don't hinder what God wants to do in your life. Don't think about it. Just be obedient. If the Lord is telling you to do it, then just do it. Don't let somebody that don't have faith tell you what you should and shouldn't do. You exercise in the faith that God has given you. And that's a show of fortitude on your part right there. OK, again, we thank God for you. We thank the Lord uh, for your spirit of, of wanting to hear the word of God and be a part of what's going on at Emmanuel Temple Church of God. And remember that Emmanuel Temple Church of God is a church that relentlessly unleashed to the world the power of God's word one verse at a time. Stay saved, stay sanctified, treat your neighbor right, do good for somebody, and God will do good for you. God bless you.